Welcome to this presentation on using the Oracle Data Dictionary Views. My name is John Mullins and I'll be your instructor for this module. If you have any questions throughout this module or throughout the course, feel free to use the question and comment boxes provided to you and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So let's see what uh, Oracle Data Dictionary Views are and let's get started with that and see how to use those and where we can use those. Some of the topics that we'll cover here are the different types of data dictionary views. So some of these you're going to have access to and won't need special privileges for, so we'll talk about those. Uh, some of these you'll need special privileges to get to, okay? But some of these you're going to have access to by default. So unless the, de the default privileges have been taken away for some reason, you should still have access to the majority of the views that we talk about. Otherwise, I'll let you know which ones take special privileges. All right. These data dictionary views are going to give us information about our database and objects in our database. So things like information about tables and columns, constraints, indexes. Think about any object type that you store in the database. Stored procedures, functions, packages, triggers, all that information we can access through these data dictionary views. Um, depending on what tool or utility you're using to access Oracle, some of those tools actually will access these views for you and then report back the information in a nice graphical representation. Um, otherwise, if you're just using, say, SQL Plus or some tool that doesn't have much functionality, you're going to be required to know the names of these views. All right, we're just going to issue select statements against these views to access their data. We'll review some of the more helpful ones um, and identify those for you so that when you go back to your work environment or back to your Oracle environment, um, you can start using them right away. All right, so what are data dictionary views? Um, they're going to give us information about any object in the database, including the database itself. So we'll often refer to these things as metadata. Um, again, think about any particular Oracle object that you can think of. There's going to be a view that will give us information about that. And if you remember just what a view is, it's just a select statement that's going to access you know, other tables or views, and it's going to provide the columns that, that we're interested in and the rows that we're interested in. So in Oracle, there are hundreds of these data dictionary views. And you can see this, the list of all these views that we're talking about from another view called all underscore views. If we did a query from there, we can see all the views that are available to us. And like I said, there's going to be hundreds of those. Um, a lot of times if you go to Oracle trade shows or conferences, there'll be vendors there that'll be either selling or giving away posters that have all these views on them to help you uh, identify the views and be able to navigate and select from those views. There's basically three types that we're concerned with here. Uh, the, a view name that starts with user underscore, a view name that starts with all underscore, and a view name that starts with DBA underscore. Um, we'll talk about each one of those kind of throughout this module and then if you join us in the demonstration module you'll see how to use all three of these types. So let's start with the user under, uh, underscore views. So the asterisk there um, just says it could be any name that follows it. So we'll see some useful view names here in a little bit, but be, an example would be user underscore tables or user underscore indexes, something like that. Anything that starts with user underscore is going to give you information about an object type, such as a table or index, that you own whoever you're logged in as in Oracle. So you'll, you'll hear the keyword schema a lot. Uh, schema in this case refers to an Oracle user ID and what objects that user ID actually owns. Okay, the, the definition of schema has kind of changed over the years, but that's its current meaning right now. An Oracle user ID and the objects that it owns there. So user underscore are things that you own. Okay, and everybody has access to these views, user underscore, user underscore tables, user underscore indexes, um, user underscore synonyms. Basically, if you think of the object type and, and append it to after the name there, user underscore, and make sure it's always plural, 
um, you'll get the view name there. Or remember, you can always look at all underscore views to get the complete list. So no special privileges are needed to query anything that starts with user underscore. That's by default. Um, that's not to say that maybe a database administrator takes away those privileges from you, um, but usually they won't do that. All right, the all underscore views are similar to the user underscore views, so they'll still give you information about your objects that you own, plus they're going to give you information about objects that you don't own, but other people or other users have granted you access to them. So in other words, um, I don't own the orders table, user ID Scott does, but Scott has given me privileges to select from his table. So if I select from all underscore tables, I'll be able to see Scott's table from there. Now, the all underscore views, they look just like the user underscore views with the exception that they also have an additional column that indicates who the owner of the object is. Okay, so there is a, on a user underscore tables view. There's also an all underscore tables view. Okay, it gives me information on that. And again, these all underscore views, just like the user underscore views, no special privileges are needed to access these. So in every Oracle database, by default, you as a user have access to any of the views that start with user underscore or any of the views that start with all underscore. Now the DBA underscore view is a little bit different story here. Okay? They're going to give you everything the other two types of views give you. So you'll see information about objects you own. You're also going to see information about objects you don't own but have privileges to. But then the third thing is you're going to see information about objects you don't own and you don't have privileges to. The DBA underscore views does take special privileges. Okay? So not everybody can access the DBA underscore type views. But to give you an example, there is a user underscore tables, there is an all underscore tables, and there is a DBA underscore tables view. Since these are views, if you're in SQL Plus, you can just do a describe on those to see the column names, but they're going to have columns like table underscore name, or the owner of the object, or the table space the table is located in, things like that. Plus, these views have quite a few columns in them. So there's quite a few statistical type of columns. So just remember, you have access to the user underscore and the all underscore by default. You need special privileges for the DBA views. All right, some useful views that we might um, want to take advantage of. We mentioned the user underscore tables, the all underscore tables. Gives you information about tables in your database. Uh, these are at a high level, these two views here, so they won't tell you the column names in the tables. But, you know, here's the table names, here's where the table's located, um, here's some statistical information about the table, like number of rows, things like that. Um, if it's all underscore tables, who owns the table? Okay. You also have high level views like user indexes or all indexes to give us information about any indexes that might be in the database. And, um, how they might help us in speeding up our retrieval. Again, these are at a high level, so they don't tell us what columns are indexed. Those are going to come from other views. And then information about constraints. User constraints, all constraints. Primary keys, foreign keys, those types of constraints. Now, if we want information about columns, we might look at user index columns or all index columns, like you see on these two views here. Or if we want to see information about columns in a table, we might look at user tab columns or all tab columns. All right? Again, you can, if you're in SQL Plus, you can do describe on these, see what columns these views contain, and then do your queries. But they're going to have things like table name, column name, and then we can see something like the data type, any precision or scale, if that makes sense for that data type any statistical information as well. So, so these views here are all helpful in identifying information about our tables and indexes and constraints, which are very important. Some other useful data dictionary views that might be available to us, uh, user objects or all objects, or user source or all source. And again, on these you, you might also have a DBA underscore objects or a DBA underscore source, but these are the ones you have access to. 
All right. These are the views that we might look at for stored objects such as stored procedures, functions, packages, triggers, views, things like that. I mean, basically, it's all types of objects. If we look at the user objects or all objects view, um, it'll tell us whether or not the object is currently um, valid or not. So if it's a compiled program such as a stored procedure, we could see that in the all objects view. As an example, if it, it did not compile successfully, its status would be invalid. And then for any of those stored objects like stored procedures, functions, packages, triggers, we could also go to the views called user source or all underscore source and actually get the source code for those programs. So remember in Oracle, if you're writing stored programs, the source code is stored in the database. Oracle keeps one version of that source code in the database. So those views have a column called text. You could select text from all source where name equals and then the name of your procedure. Now in accessing these data dictionary views, there's a few other things that we should be concerned with. One is if we're looking up information about objects and we're looking it up by object name, we're always going to look it up in uppercase. So in other words, let's say I wanted some information about a table called orders. Um, I might select some columns from the view called all underscore tables where table underscore name equals orders. The table name is a, is a character string so it'll be in single quotes and I do have to put the table name in uppercase. We'll demonstrate that in our demonstration module that follows this particular module. So feel free to join us there and you, and you can see some um, actual working examples on what I'm talking about there. So always remember that that you have access to anything that starts with user underscore, you have access to anything that starts with all underscore, and if you're referring to um, object names, you're going to refer to them always in uppercase. Uh, the rest of your query can be in mixed case, that's no big deal, but always in uppercase. If you have any questions regarding this module or other modules throughout the course, feel free to use the question and comment box, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible there. Otherwise, feel free to join us in the demonstration module on data dictionary views to see some uh, actual working code on how you can take advantage of these views in learning more about your database objects. Thank you for joining us.